Welcome to Holy Week at the Log Church. This is such a great week where we can focus not on what's going on with the coronavirus and not on what's going on in the things that we've lost and the things that we're missing, but instead that we can focus on the resurrection of Christ. I want to invite you to walk Resurrection Road with us. And that road doesn't always happen the way that we expect. I want to give you a little story in the Bible that is really not shared as often, but I think it's so vital for us to key in on this, especially with what's going on. It says in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, this is after Jesus had been crucified. He had been placed in a tomb, and it says here in verse 1 and 2, it says, when the Sabbath had passed, this is now Sunday morning, this is going to be resurrection day, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go up and anoint him. And very early, pay attention to that, and very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. Now, you might say, okay, well, tell us the story. We want to hear the resurrection. Well, you know he rose from the grave, right? Or else we won't be here. So that's not what I want to focus on. I want you to imagine these three ladies. And just so you know, this is a side thing. This is always something I want to focus on. When people say the Bible, you know, it's like antiquated and it doesn't really mention how women are empowered. And, you know, Jesus did more for women and elevating women and their role in the ministry of the gospel than any other religious leader that ever lived in terms of their religious followers. And this is a perfect example because Jesus chooses to reveal himself to women first. Keep that in mind. Now, that's an unpause. That's just a theological golden nugget from Pastor Sam. We're not going to charge you. However, if you do want to hit that give now button, Hilltop Log Church, whatever the, uh, the link is that we're going to put up there for you, you can do that. That's just for you. But let's get back to the story here real quick. So I want you to imagine what's happened in the last couple weeks. Jesus was well known throughout the whole entire area. And these women were involved in his ministry. Then all of a sudden, he's crucified. He's become a public enemy. He is put on display in front of horrible people that are scorning and laughing and mocking about his death. And he's crucified with two thieves in the place of a murderer. And now for the first time in maybe years, a couple years, these followers of Jesus who had such a great large group of people find themselves completely and totally alone. Does that sound familiar? That's where some of you are right now. It's hard. I'll be honest. I'm, I struggle. I was struggling the other day with what's going on in the church and what's going on um, you know, for our church. I love the church. And it's funny because our Sundays and Saturdays were always so filled with busyness and always people around. And and yesterday I came up and I was like, oh, I'm going to go work in one of the buildings. And I was working there, you know, in this empty commercial building that nobody's in and it's safe because nobody's coming in. And I locked myself in and I miss being around people. I miss the people. I miss connecting with people. I miss, you know, hugging people and shaking their hands. And I miss those interactions. And Loneliness is a real thing. And what I find fascinating about this story and where we are is like overnight, the community of being physically together went away. And now all of us are dealing in some form of another with the loss of some sort of communal connection. Some of you, you can't visit your parents. Some of you can't visit your grandparents. Some of you, you have cousins and you were planning on getting, having a get-together. There are some people in the church, they cancel weddings and now they're waiting. When, when are we going to get this done and when, when's this going to happen? And, and they, they're trying to plan something, but we're all in the same situation. We're all alone, isolated. My encouragement is this. These ladies had that same experience. They were alone. But guess what happened in the midst of their loneliness? Jesus rose from the grave. That's pretty stinking exciting. That's pretty amazing. Let me tell you something else. God appears and speaks to people when they're alone. Oh, you have time on your hands. Now go ahead, look in Genesis. Look at Jacob when he's alone in the wilderness that God speaks to him and appears to him. And he wakes up and says, surely the presence of the Lord was in this place, and I didn't know it. 
Think about all those patriarchs. Abraham, when God appeared to him and spoke to him and led him out of the land, he spoke to him when he was alone. God is going to do a lot of speaking in the coming weeks and months to you. God is going to change a lot of lives. The greatest thing that he could change your life with is the promise and the hope of resurrection. And sometimes we need to experience that loneliness because the truth is the only person we could ever depend completely on that's always going to be there is Jesus. And all of the things that we experience that we take for granted, they're seasonal. But Jesus and his connection and his love is forever. That's why we have our Good Friday church services. You know, we have Good Friday church services this Friday, every single hour starting at 11 a.m. And they're going to go all the way up through until the early evening. We did that on purpose because there are some people right now that they don't have that hope. They don't have that connection and they feel completely alone. Well, we don't want to offer, we want to offer you the message that not only are you not alone, but our God does his best work when we feel alone. The road to resurrection is marked with loneliness, but it still leads to resurrection.